Lucy Wills, Lucy Wills, M.A., Cantab, L.R.C.P., M.B.B.S., Lond, the 10th of May 1888, the 16th of April 1964, was a leading English haematologist. She conducted seminal work in India in the late 1920s and early 1930s on macrocytic anemia of pregnancy. Her observations led to her discovery of a nutritional factor in yeast which both prevents and cures this disorder. Macrocytic anemia is characterized by enlarged red blood cells and is life-threatening. Poor pregnant women in the tropics with inadequate diets are particularly susceptible. The nutritional factor identified by Lucy Wills, the Wills factor, was subsequently shown to be folate, the naturally occurring form of folic acid. Early life, Lucy Wills was born on 10 May 1888 in Sutton Coldfield near Birmingham. Her paternal great-grandfather, William Wills, had been a prosperous Birmingham attorney from a nonconformist Unitarian family. His son, her grandfather, had bought an edge tool business in Nettles, A.W. Wills and Son, which manufactured such things as scythes and sickles and which her father continued to run and manage the financial crises. The family was comfortably off. Lucy Wills's father, William Leonard Wills, 1858-1911, was a science graduate of Owens College Manchester. Her mother, Gertrude Annie Wills N.E. Johnston, 1855-1939, was the only daughter, with six brothers, of a well-known Birmingham doctor, Dr. James Johnston. The family had a strong interest in scientific matters. Lucy Wills's great-grandfather, William Wills, had been involved with the British Association for the Advancement of Science and wrote papers on meteorology and other scientific observations. Lucy Wills's father was particularly interested in botany, zoology, geology and natural sciences generally, as well as in the developing science of photography. Her brother, Leonard Johnston Wills carried this interest in geology and natural sciences into his own career with great success. Lucy Wills was brought up in the country near Birmingham, initially in Sutton Coldfield, and then from 1892 in Barn Green to the south of Birmingham. She went at first to a local school called Tanglewood kept by a Miss Ash, ex-governess to the Chamberlain family of Birmingham. Chiltenham Ladies College, English girls had few opportunities for education and entry into the professions, particularly medicine, until towards the end of the 19th century. Lucy Wills was of a generation which benefited from the work of various radical Victorian reformers, and the three educational establishments to which she went, the Chiltenham Ladies College, Newnham College Cambridge, and the London School of Medicine for Women, typified their achievements. They also share an elegant, confident, late Victorian architecture. Lucy Wills went in September 1903 to the Chiltenham Ladies College, which had been founded in 1854 by Dorothea Bale, a prominent Victorian pioneer of reform of women's education. Miss Bale was a supporter of women's suffrage, having been one of the signatories of John Stuart Mill's 1867 petition to Parliament to give women the vote, and was principal of the college from 1858 until her death in 1906. Lucy Wills' elder sister Edith was in the same house, Glinley, two years ahead of her. Glinley was then more expensive and socially exclusive than the other houses. Miss Bale created a school which, while being socially and intellectually privileged, was radical and progressive. It provided girls with a high standard of academic education in which there was a strong emphasis on science and mathematics. It encouraged independence, public spiritedness, and ambition in professional and academic life. Marion Russell Watson, a protégé of Ruskin's, attended the school and Ruskin donated to it a number of important and valuable books and manuscripts. Lucy Wills' examination record was good. She passed the Oxford Local Senior, Division I in the autumn of 1905, the University of London, Matriculation, Division II in the autumn of 1906, and Part I, Class III and Pali, exempt from Part II and additional subjects by matriculation. London, Newnham entrance in 1907. Newnham College Cambridge, in September 1907, Lucy Wills went up to Newnham College Cambridge. Newnham was the second of the Cambridge Women's Colleges. Churton had been established in 1869, Newnham in 1872, mainly because of the pioneering work of Henry Sidgwick, then a fellow of Trinity. He died in 1890, but his widow Elena was principal of the college when Lucy Wills arrived. Elena's brother Arthur Balfour had been Prime Minister from 1902 to 1905 and sometimes visited the college when Lucy Wills was there. Newnham's first principal, Anne Clough, and the Sidgwicks all shared a commitment to the higher education of women in a college with no particular religious affiliation. Newnham and its founders had to struggle for recognition from the Cambridge University authorities. The university allowed women, 
Ben from the two colleges of Jurton and Newnham, to sit its examinations, but refused to grant them full degrees until 1948. At Cambridge, Lucy Wills was heavily influenced by the botanist Albert Charles Seward, and also by the paleobiologist Herbert Henry Thomas who worked on Carboniferous paleobotany. Lucy Wills finished her course in 1911 and obtained a Class II in Part I of the Natural Sciences Tripus in 1910 and Class II in Part II, Botany, in 1911. Because she could not receive a degree, she received a certificate that she had taken and been successful in the Tripus exams. In 1928 she received the titular degree of M.A. Cantab, a stitch between certificates and full degrees which operated from 1921 to 1948. 1911 to 1914, in February 1911, Lucy Wills' father died at the early age of 52. She had been very close to him and his unexpected death probably affected her final exam results that summer. In 1913 her elder sister Edith died at the age of 26. Later that year, Lucy Wills and her mother traveled by sea to Ceylon, now SRI Lanka, where they visited relatives and friends. In 1914 she and her younger brother Gordon traveled by sea to South Africa. A friend from Newnham, Margaret, Margaret, Hume, was lecturing in botany at the South African College, then part of the University of the Cape of Good Hope. She and Lucy Wills were both interested in Sigmund Freud's theories. When the war started in August 1914, Gordon enlisted in the Transvaal Scottish Regiment. Lucy Wills spent some weeks doing voluntary nursing in a hospital in Cape Town, before she and Margaret Hume returned by sea to England, arriving in Plymouth in December. London, Royal Free Hospital, School of Medicine for Women, in January 1915, Lucy Wills enrolled as a medical student at the London, Royal Free Hospital, School of Medicine for Women, the school, then already part of London University. The school had been established in 1874 as the London School of Medicine for Women and was the first medical school in Britain to train women. The foundation of the school was due to Sophia Jex Blake and her supporters. These included Charles Darwin, Lord Shaftesbury, and Thomas Huxley together with a number of pioneering women physicians, among them the first women in England to obtain a medical qualification, Elizabeth Garrett Anderson. In 1877 the Royal Free Hospital agreed to allow the school students access to the wards and outpatient departments, and in 1898 the two institutions joined forces with the school changing its name to the London, Royal Free Hospital, School of Medicine for Women. It became part of London University. It was in Hunter Street, next to Brunswick Square in Bloomsbury, while the Royal Free Hospital was in Grayson Road, about a quarter of a mile away. The school had strong links with India, and had a number of Indian women students, including Dr. Jensha Jirad, the first Indian woman to qualify with a degree in obstetrics and gynecology in 1919, the year before Lucy Wills graduated. Lucy Wills became a legally qualified medical practitioner with the qualification of licentiate of the Royal College of Physicians London awarded in May 1920, LRCP Lond 1920, and the London University degrees of Medical Bachelor and Bachelor of Science awarded in December 1920, MBBS Lond. She was then 32. Professional career, 1920-1928, on qualifying, Lucy Wills decided not to practice as a physician, but to research and teach in the Department of Chemical Pathology at the Royal Free. There she worked with Christine Pillman, later Mrs. Ulysses Williams, who had been at Jurton at the same time Lucy was at Newnham, on metabolic studies of pregnancy, to India. In 1928 Lucy Wills began her seminal research work in India on macrocytic anemia in pregnancy. This was prevalent in a severe form among poorer women with dietary deficiencies, particularly those in the textile industry. Dr. Margaret Balfour of the Indian Medical Service had asked her to join the maternal mortality eye inquiry sponsored by the Indian Research Fund Association at the Hafkin Institute in Bombay, now Mumbai. The Lady Tata Foundation also provided financial support. Lucy Wills was in India between 1928 and 1933, mostly based at the Hafkin Institute in Bombay. In the summer of 1929, from April to October, she moved her work to the Pasteur Institute of India in Kunor, where Sir Robert Mickerson was director of nutrition research, and in early 1931 she was working at the Cast and Gosha Hospital in Madras. In each of the summers of 1930, 1931 and 1932 she returned to England for a few months and continued her work in the pathology laboratories at the Royal Free. She was back at the Royal Free full-time in 1933, but there was another 10-week working visit to the Hafkin Institute from November 1937 to early January 1938. On this occasion, and for the first time, Lucy Wills travelled by air to Kerji and onwards by sea. The air journey in October 1937 was in an Imperial Airways flying boat, on their recently inaugurated route carrying mail and some passengers. The flying boat was a short C-class Empire flying boat, the Calypso, GAEUA. 
The route started at Southampton and involved landings on water for refueling at Marseilles, Braxiano near Rome, Brindisi, Athens, Alexandria, Tiberias, Habania to the west of Baghdad, Basra, Berrien, Dubai, Dwadar and Kerchi, with overnight stops at Rome, Alexandria, Basra and Sharjah, just outside Dubai. The five-day flight was the first of the Imperial Airways flights to go beyond Alexandria. Lucy Wills was well introduced in India, probably through Dr. Margaret Balfour and Sir Robert McCarrison. In Bombay she was on dining terms with the governors and their wives at Government House, Sir Leslie Wilson in 1928 and Sir Frederick Sykes in 1929. In 1929 she visited Missouri and wrote to her brother that I was most fortunate to be under the wing of Sir Charles Todd Hunter, who is a very important person there. Todd Hunter had been governor of Madras and in 1929 was secretary to the Maharaja of Missouri, then one of the world's richest men. Anemia of pregnancy, Lucy Wills observed an apparent correlation between the dietary habits of different classes of Bombay women and the likelihood of their becoming anemic during pregnancy. Poor Muslim women were the ones with both the most deficient diets and the greatest susceptibility to anemia. This anemia was then known as pernicious anemia of pregnancy. However, Lucy Wills was able to demonstrate that the anemia she observed differed from true pernicious anemia, as the patients did not have achlorhydria, an inability to produce gastric acid. Furthermore, while patients responded to crude liver extracts, they did not respond to the pure liver extracts, vitamin B12, which had been shown to treat true pernicious anemia. She postulated that there must have been another nutritional factor responsible for this macrocytic anemia other than vitamin B12 deficiency. For some years this nutritional factor was known as the Wills factor, and it was later shown, in the 1940s, to be folate, of which the synthetic form is folic acid. Lucy Wills decided to investigate possible nutritional treatments by first studying the effects of dietary manipulation on a macrocytic anemia in albino rats. This work was done at the Nutritional Research Laboratories at the Pasteur Institute of India in Kunor. Rats fed on the same diet as Bombay Muslim women became anemic, pregnant ones dying before giving birth. The rat anemia was prevented by the addition of yeast to synthetic diets which had no vitamin B. This work was later replicated using rhesus monkeys. Back in Bombay, Lucy Wills conducted clinical trials on patients with the macrocytic anemia, and established experimentally that this type of anemia could be both prevented and cured by yeast extracts, of which the cheapest source was Marmite. After India, Lucy Wills was back again at the Royal Free from 1938 until her retirement in 1947. During the Second World War she was a full-time pathologist in the emergency medical service. Work in the pathology department was disrupted for a few days in July 1944, and a number of people killed, when the hospital suffered a direct hit from a V-1 flying bomb. By the end of the war, she was in charge of pathology at the Royal Free and had established the first hematology department there. After her retirement, Lucy Wills travelled extensively, including to Jamaica, Fiji and South Africa, continuing her observations on nutrition and anemia. Personal life, Lucy Wills never married, she was of a generation, and a class, which had lost a large number of its young men on the Western Front. She was close to her parents, her siblings, and their children. She enjoyed a number of close lifelong friendships, including with Christine and Ulysses Williams, with her Cambridge contemporary Margaret Hume, with whom she jointly owned a cottage in Surrey whose botanical garden they cultivated, and with Kate Lucan, the Dowager Countess, mother of the disappearing Earl, who was a fellow Labour councillor in Chelsea. Obituaries and other publications describe her as independent, autocratic, not a sufferer of fools, a joyous and enthusiastic teacher, an indomitable walker and skier, an enthusiastic traveller, a lover of the beauty of nature, mirthful and entertaining. Lucy Wills died on the 26th of April 1964. The obituary in the British Medical Journal the following month included the following comments. The excellence of her work on tropical megaloblastic anemia has long been recognized by nutritionists and hematologists. Every medical student has heard of its cure by her discovery of the Wills factor in yeast extract, which paved the way for the subsequent work on folic acid. It was one of the simple but great observations which are landmarks in the history and treatment of the nutritional anemias. Lucy Wills even in her 70s was always a tireless worker, and seeing her example other people found themselves working harder than they had believed possible. Though impatient with laziness and with half-baked opinions, she was compassionate to other human feelings. She held strong convictions on social questions, and steadily upheld them as a borough councillor in Chelsea during the last decade of her life. She had wide interests, particularly loving books, gardens, music, and the theatre, and enjoying life always with keen intelligence and humour.
Her generosity and magnanimity, combined with outstanding ability and resolution, made friends of all who ever worked with her and found her worthy of profound respect and deep affection. On the 10th of May 2019, search engine Google commemorated Lucy Wills with a doodle on her 131st birth anniversary. Publications, Lucy Wills' first learned paper was in 1914, on plant cuticles. There were a further two papers in the 1920s before she started her work in India. Four reports of her field and laboratory studies in India were published in the Indian Journal of Medical Research in 1930 and 1931. After her return to England, there were a number of further papers concerning her work on tropical macrocytic anemia. A list of her main publications is set out below. 1. Wills, L. 1914, Plant Cuticles from the Coal Measures of Britain, Geological Magazine I 385-92, Wills, L. and Warwick, J. 1924, The Adenoid Child, A Histological and Clinical Study, Quarterly Journal of Medicine 17 No. 66, 162, 9, 3. Pillman Williams, E. C. and Wills, L. 1929, Studies in Blood and Urinary Chemistry During Pregnancy, Blood Sugar Curves. Quarterly Journal of Medicine 22-493-505-4, Wills, L. and Mecta, M.M., 1930, Studies in Pernicious Anemia of Pregnancy, Part 1 Preliminary Report Indian Journal of Medical Research 17-777-925, Wills, L. and Tal Paid, S.N., 1931, Studies in Pernicious Anemia of Pregnancy. Part IIA Survey of Detetic and Hygienic Conditions of Women in Bombay Indian Journal of Medical Research 18283306-6, Wills, L. and Mecta, M.M., 1931, Studies in Pernicious Anemia of Pregnancy. Part 3 Determination of Normal Blood Standards for the Nutritional Laboratories Stock Albinorat Indian Journal of Medical Research 18307-177, Wills, L. and Mecta, M.M., 1931, Studies in Pernicious Anemia of Pregnancy. Part 4 The Production of Pernicious Anemia, Bartonella Anemia, in Intact Albino Rats by Deficient Feeding Indian Journal of Medical Research 18663838, Wills, L, 1931, Treatment of Pernicious Anemia of Pregnancy and Tropical Anemia, with special reference to yeast extract as a curative agent. British Medical Journal 1, 1059-649, Wills, L, 1933, The Nature of the Hemopoietic Factor in Marmite, Lancet 221 1283-510, Wills, L, 1934, Indian Journal of Medical Research 21 669 11, Wills, L and Stewart, A, 1935, British Journal of Experimental Pathology 16 444 12, Wills, L and Clutterbuck, P. W. and Evans, BDF, 1937, a new factor in the production and cure of certain macrocytic anemias. Lancet 229-311-1413, Wills, L and Evans, BDF, 1938, Tropical Macrocytic Anemia, its relation to pernicious anemia. Lancet 232-416-2114. Wills, L, 1945, Nutrition Surveys, London School of Medicine Magazine 6-7 NS 2-5. Please subscribe Wiki Audio YouTube page below. Click notification or bell icon to get future videos uploaded as instant notification, and write your valuable comment, suggestion, topics you would like to cover in next video, feedback to improve in future videos. Check out channel page to get more videos and share this channel to your friends and relatives.